Her name is Suzuri, and right now she is rejecting her childhood friend, who considered her someone special in his heart. His name is Yukito, and after hearing what Suzuri just said, he couldn't face her anymore and started running. He was sure the way she behaved was like someone who had an interest in him. However, it seems not to be the case, and he cannot understand what her true feelings are. All he wishes for right now is to disappear in a place far away since something inside of him was destroyed once again. Some time has passed since that incident, and now we are at a new school. As it is the first day, the introduction is the most important event that will determine how easy your school life will go. Looking at the others and the way they introduce themselves, Yukito wonders if he should put on a spectacular debut. As he sees another person presenting herself in a weird way, he believes it is better to go for a more casual introduction. He can already see the rankings, and that's why it would be better not to risk it all with his introduction. Well, Yukito believes he is just an innocent, gloomy character and decides to use an easy and forgettable presentation. To be honest, I'm happy he chose it because I cannot imagine what a really outstanding introduction would look like. As he stands up, the boy shouts out loud, Thanks for having me, but I'm quitting school. As everyone looks at him with confused expressions on their faces, Yukito keeps his smile on his face. However, he understands why everyone looks at him with those eyes. Even the teacher was taken aback by what he said. As he continues with the introduction, suggesting he is aiming to be a gloomy guy who's always alone and that he will pretend to be asleep most of the time with the expectation of being treated as air and pretending he does not exist. He would not even mind if the other would verbally attack him. With that being said, nobody would even try to speak to a gloomy person like him, and now, as he looks through the class, he observes how everyone dodges to look at him. Hearing all that, the teacher tells him that he cannot just waste his entire school year like that and suggests she will listen to him if he wants to speak. However, he declines, and, with a smile on his face, says that his high school life is not the only thing he wasted. From behind, someone starts making some noise and cannot stop himself from laughing anymore. This guy believes Yukito is really funny and wants to exchange phone numbers with him since being around Yukito would definitely make this a fun year. As Yukito is not understanding what is happening and why this guy is speaking to a gloomy guy like him, Mihu says that he is the opposite of gloomy. He stands up the most. With that being said, the two of them should become friends. At this hearing, Yukito believes he is about to become the errand boy. By placing a gloomy guy like himself by his side, Kuki's handsomeness will shine even more. But even so, a self-centered guy is still easier to deal with compared to a poker face. Hearing what he said, Kuki believes Yukito is shit-talking about him, and moreover, Yukito is questioning, what should a friend do? Lend him money? Surprise the boy, who only wants the two of them to become friends and spend time together. Hearing them speak, another girl approaches them and suggests that since they are all classmates, they should get together and go to karaoke. This prompts Yukito to believe this is just a trap that he must not fall into. Now, with a confident voice, he calls the sunny girl a Quen and tries to decline her, prompting the girl to show that everyone in class would like him to join. However, he excuses himself and says that there is something he must do today. As he made himself understood, he stood up and left the classroom, but not before hearing the girl say that she was looking forward to next time. He was not lying when he said that he must do it today. However, hanging around those girls is a bad idea. The girl named Hinagi is in a relationship, and Yukito would hate to be the one who causes issues in their relationship as her childhood friend. Shiori is the most innocent person he has ever seen, and it hurts him to see that she has a hard time around him. When he saw their names on the classroom list, he swore that he would not get anywhere near them, yet here they are on the first day. Later, at the karaoke, the students start speaking about Yukito and wonder what's up with him. Who would declare he was going to quit school on their first day? As the others seem worried, 
Kuki jumps into the conversation, saying they don't have to worry about Yukito, since he is an interesting person. Apparently, the two of them have played basketball together since middle school. Hearing that, one of the girls questions the boy, asking if the two of them had a match back in the middle school, making Kuki realize this girl and Yuki know each other. And because of that, he wants to know why Yukito hasn't shown up to the tournament. However, she cannot speak about that. Yuki hates her now. Apparently, she started to have an interest in him starting with their second year. Their club wasn't committed to their activities. Everyone was just having fun. But there was somebody different. Yukito was the only one who kept picking the ball back up and shooting it as he was possessed while trying to forget about something. His passion and commitment fired something inside all the club members, and with him they could have aimed for a high spot in the tournament. He was amazing. However, even though he is able to change people just with his behavior, he never takes care of himself. That's why this girl kept her eyes on him. And before she realized, because she was still a kid back then, she couldn't be honest with herself. So she held back her feeling and confessed to him when she was confused. Thanks to that, she betrayed him in the most hideous way. And as she speaks, there is another girl sitting by her side saying the same thing at the same time. It's my fault. Yuki turned into the way he currently is, creating a bit of confusion, or better said, creating a weird mood since the two of them do not know each other and it looks like both of them have done something to Yuki. It turns out the blonde-haired girl is Yukito's childhood friend, but this is not important right now. She wants to know who she is. But before this situation gets worse, another girl jumps in between the two of them. Since this is a get-together, they should all get along and stop fighting, yet one of the girls just decides to leave, letting everyone be in a bad mood while Kuki is laughing his ass out. As he predicted, having Yukito around him would make everything so much better. On another side, at Yukito's house, the boy is kneeling in front of his sister, who is questioning his introduction at school. Even though the two of them are in the same school, Yukito cannot understand how she found out about that. However, he cannot ask any questions since he finds himself in a judge-defendant situation. Most probably, she has a spy in his class that would make his life much harder. As he starts digging, he is questioned about whether his behavior was because of Suzurikawa and Kamashiro. He decides not to give an answer, but that was enough for his sister to understand. The judge finds the defendant guilty and sentences them to death. Finding out what his sister knows about both girls makes his face change, and his mood is becoming worse. With that, he decides that is enough and excuses himself, suggesting he must study. As he went into his room, Yukito was angry at himself because of his behavior and believed his sister might be worried about him. But that would be impossible. She hates him. Meanwhile, in the other room, his sister is angry because her brother is always the one suffering. She wanted her brother to have a bright school life, but now it feels like nothing has changed. She will never forget those two girls who messed with Yukito. Even though his eyes are always scared of her, unless it's to help her, the boy never talks to her. She was the one who caused all this. Ever since one specific day in the past, he has never called her sister. And with that being said, he must hate her. But no matter what, she is going to protect him from those two. But when he shows up at school the next day, the two girls are waiting, grinning mischievously, ready for yet another challenge for the brooding boy. The two girls, now facing each other, show off an irritated expression, trying to get rid of one another. Meanwhile, the boy inside his mind knows he does not want to speak with either of them. He just wants to have his lonely lunch. But if that was not enough, his friend comes from behind, asking what club he is going to join, prompting one of the girls to say that it must be the basketball club, and with that, being said, she will be the manager. Thinking about what she said, and that basketball brought him just bad memories in return, Yuki says that basketball is not his thing anymore, and he is done with it since nothing pushes him to play it now. Hearing his words, the girl has a sudden breakdown and screams that he tried so hard. But seeing his expressionless face, she is about to start crying. Yuki asks the girl how long she going to pity him, 
prompting her to apologize. However, he brushed it off with a smile, saying that he was not going to join any club either way. A gloomy guy like him will go with the typical club, the home club. Even though his friend tries to push him from behind and motivate him to join the club, Yuki just ignores them and heads toward the cafeteria, wishing the girl good luck in being the manager. Now, as he walks in the hallway and sees the baseball players through the window, a thought about how passionate they look passes through his mind. And the memory of him and how he used to practice as crazy filled his mind for a moment. However, now when he touches the ball, he feels nothing. He's lost all the energy and passion he once had. He doesn't believe he'll ever play like he used to, but that's that. There's no use dwelling on it. Entering the classroom, Yuki is welcomed by the girl who rejected him, who is questioning if he had brought his lunch and invites him to eat together. Surprised by her behavior, the boy tells her she should not speak with him. Confused, the girl asked for a reason. They are classmates and at the same time childhood friends. But that is all in the past. Things have changed. Worried about why that is, she keeps on asking for a reason only to be hit by the boyfriend card. Yuki suggests that he would feel bad for her boyfriend if the two of them ate together. He is actually doing this for her. Personally, he wouldn't be happy seeing his girlfriend with another guy, especially a childhood friend. The moment she chooses someone, the two of them can no longer hang around each other. All he can do is put some distance between them. Only because they've been childhood friends doesn't mean they have to stay together forever. And now, as he leaves the room, he tells her to invite somebody else. Maybe he wants to wish her well because at some point he liked her. But now, he's unsure of his feelings and might never figure them out. The girl, with food in her hands and tears streaming down her face, is left alone, blaming herself for what she has done in the past.